Welcome. Uh, thanks so much for being here um, at our Blue Carpet Gala. I am Kristen Yost. I work in the marketing department. I would give you my title, but it's a little long, so we'll just stick with marketing department. And uh, we also have Ryan here, class of 2005? Six. 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 He took a victory lap, so 2006. <laughs> um, and uh, we are going to be your hosts tonight. Tonight we will honor seven alumni award winners and five sports hall of fame inductees. And so here's a little bit about how the night will go. We will invite the um, award winners up on stage. We'll have a little chat. And then the award winners just walk off the stage here, um, grab your plaque. And then at the end of the night, we will have time for photos. In your program tonight, you can read all about our award winners, Hall of Fame inductees, and also the criteria that it takes to be a part of this stage tonight. Wonderful. Ready to go? Ready to go. All right. All right, our first um, award winner, uh, Distinguished Alumnus Award, goes to Patrick Brown. Can I get him to come up? So Patrick uh, majored in economics, minored in finance, and he grew up in Latin America and then came to uh, Wingate for college. So we will talk to him a little bit about how that transition happened. Welcome. Thank you. Have a seat. So Patrick, yeah, talk to us first about how, how you found Wingate from Latin America. Oh, uh, well, first of all, I didn't realize I was going to be the first one up here, so uh, <laughs> thank you. Sure. Um, well, honestly, I, I, I was born in D.C. My father worked for the U.S. State Department. Um, we immediately, pretty much within a year or two, moved to Latin America, grew up in Brazil, Bolivia, spent a little time in Ecuador, uh, came back to the U.S. to go to college, and uh, living in Latin America, thought I was going to be a professional soccer player. Uh, quickly realized when I got to, uh, to Wingate that uh, there's a lot of good soccer players. Um, and so decided to buckle down in economics and finance, got a degree, Dr. Veda Das um, was, was just fabulous, took an econ degree, uh, econ class, loved it, and, um, and, and, and just continued on from there. Um, and then started a, started a company in, uh, ap soon after graduating with a gentleman by the name of Wayne Cooper. Um, fabulous man, still a mentor, friend uh, to this day. Just spoke to him today. Lives here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Matter of fact, is a, is a, is, is a trustee here uh, on the board. And, uh, and, and just had just a, an incredible opportunity uh, leaving Wingate to, uh, to really get into to business. So it was and, you, just, and you also met your wife here at Wingate. I did. That's yes. right. My wife's uh, originally from Darlington, South Carolina. Uh, family lived in Monroe. As a matter of fact, as I was driving in from the airport, uh, I live in Austin, Texas now, uh, but driving in from the airport, swung by the, the old house. Um, but we met here, and uh, funny story, we met here, uh, I guess I was about a junior or so, and uh, we, we, we went on a date, we went uh, out of town, had never actually met her parents that lived in Monroe, and she got extremely sick, um, and uh, come to find out, had a ruptured appendix. Oh my. Didn't, didn't know that at the time, of course. Um, but the first time I got to meet her father, uh, Tom Duncan, who happens to stand six foot eight, uh, <laughs> was at the at hospital. Um, so that was quite the experience. But yeah, it's, it's been uh, a Wingate family since and, and uh, just proud to have been part of the university and, and frankly got a chance to bring my son back this summer to go to a football camp with Coach Reich and, and, the, and the football team. And um, maybe he becomes a bulldog as well. So we'll see. Awesome. Well, you touched on a little bit um, <clears throat> talking about family. Talk about the importance that family, um, the, the role that they have played along in your journey. Yeah, I mean, I, I always say nothing is accomplished individually. There's no I in, in anything you do, frankly. Um, it's, not just, it's not just family. I can start from my grandfather and, and mother and father that taught me the work ethic uh, to, to, to just really buckle down and work hard to, uh, to frankly, my experience here at Wingate uh, and the family that I built here to... Uh, my wife, who we've been married now 22 years, going on 23 years, uh, who supports me in everything we do and 
uh, many, many years of travel and being gone and, and, and not there necessarily every day for uh, raising the family. She's the CEO of our house. Uh, to, to the kids, frankly, uh, tonight, actually, what time is it? It is uh, 7.10 here. It's 6.10 in Austin. My son's getting ready to go out on the field here in about an hour or so to play a football game, and he understands that uh, I'm not there for, for different reasons. Um, to, to, frankly... Uh, the family of, of Wayne Cooper, um, who, who took a chance on me um, and was supportive of me to, uh, to, to invest in, in the ideas that, that I had at the time, and uh, to, frankly, the, the family that I have now uh, with 650 employees at the company. It's, it's just, you know, nothing is an I. It, it really takes a village to make things happen in life, um, whether that's in business, whether that's with family, uh, whether it's here at the university and in, in sports uh, or what Dr. Brown is doing now here at the university, it really takes a whole village uh, to make things happen. So, And you are a big believer in servant leadership, which fits along nicely with our motto of faith, knowledge, and service. So talk a little bit um, about that um, servanthood. Yeah, um, I, I think at the end of the day, that's what a leader is. You're there to knock down barriers and serve the folks that you work with and, uh, and serve the folks that uh, work alongside you. Um, it doesn't matter what, what you know, industry or whether you're in education or whether you're in business or, or anything else, frankly, or, uh, or whether you're a pie cap back in the day, um, <laughs> as those pie caps are, are sitting over there, uh, and our moderator over here, uh, another, there you go, <laughs> another pie cap. Um, uh, Service and servant leadership is extremely important. I, I tell folks that I work with every day, my, I don't do anything. I really don't. My only job is to knock down barriers and help you do your job. Surround yourself with really smart people uh, who are super motivated and that check their egos at the door and are humble um, and just get out of their way, uh, frankly. So uh, servant leadership is extremely important. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being here tonight and chatting with us and taking time away from your family to be here. We so appreciate it. Let's give Patrick one more Absolutely. round of thank applause. Absolutely. Thank you. Here. Appreciate it. All right. Our first Sports Hall of Fame inductee from Wingate Football, Kenwin Cummings. Kenwin was a two-time All-American in the top ten in every statistical category in Wingate football history. He left the big city of Wingate and went to the Big Apple, defying all the odds as an undrafted rookie and signed with the New York football Jets. So Kenwin, not far from here, your hometown of Pembroke, North Carolina, played for Joe Reich. How did you get to Wingate? Oh, man, um, leaving uh, a really small town, like you said, really didn't have a whole ton of people come beating down the door to come to college. Uh, went to a couple. I went to Chapel Hill, went to Wake Forest, and uh, those visits were awesome. Wingate was actually the last stop that I, that I came to. Um, and when we came here, I was with my dad. And uh, my mom, we came here, and it was, we came into the, which is kind of ironic of tonight, you know, we came into the, 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 the gym, and we saw the Hall of Fame, you know, the, the wow. people who had made it. And me and my dad, we looked at each other, and he was like, that's what you got to shoot for, which I thought was obviously really cool of tonight because we, yeah. we finally got here. But that's um, pretty much how I ended at Wingate. Most memorable experience at Wingate for a stat guy, I'm thinking the sacks, the records. What was it for you? Well, I mean, all the I mean the games that we played here. I mean, now I mean, shoot, we didn't have the we couldn't play the games at night like we like we can now. I mean, all the night games are always awesome, but um, it was still really fun. But honestly, one of the um, best experiences that I had at Wingate was going on the uh, Winter uh, International. Uh, we went to Croatia and Bosnia, and I got to go with uh, Dr. McGee. Was on that trip. And I don't know what happened, but it seemed like they always paired me and him together, which was cool because we had, we had a lot in common. But um, that was really one of the best experiences um, 
that I had here was just spending time and, and then Dr. McGee being there and with, with some of the other guys I played with and other um, students I, I yeah. went here with, man, it was awesome. As I said, two-time All-American at Wingate, you earned your way to the NFL, undrafted, made the team, played four years. I know you worked really hard, but you didn't do that by yourself. Who was that big support system for you? Um, the biggest support system from day one from Pee Wee football was always my dad, who, who's here with me uh, today. He, um, he, never missed, he never missed one game all the way through college. And it was – we were flipping tires, tractor tires Hold before. On, Let's give him a round of applause there for a second. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we were – you know, we were – we raised on a farm. Uh, it's kind of farm life, traditional farm life back home. And we were flipping tires before flipping tires were, was kind of the cool yeah. cross spit kind of thing. Um, and that's, that's just always kind of been our motto, do what you got to do to get the job done. And uh, my dad was always a huge supporter uh, playing through football. A lot of guys in Wingate's program right now know the names like David Jones, John Bowman, Kenwin Cummings, successful professionals. What would you say to them and Kenwin Cummings back then uh, as your big piece of advice for them? Um, the biggest thing, um, one for, for guys who are playing at, playing at our level, yeah. um, you know, coming into the Wingate, I really didn't think there was ever that opportunity to play at that elite level. Um, and then the one thing about getting there, if you're good enough, you're determined enough, they'll find you. And um, I don't think it really matters the, where we start at, it's how we finish. And that's what I would tell all those guys who are looking to play at that elite level to keep pushing because you're good enough, they'll find you. As I said, you found your way into the NFL. You actually played in a playoff game against David Jones, who just went in the SAC Hall of Fame, the Wingate Hall of Fame. What are the odds there? What is your biggest takeaway from your time in the NFL? Um, I'm going to kind of piggyback off of what we, what we just said. Um, if, you're, if you're good enough, they'll find you. And there is – it's a business, and they're looking for the best, the best people they can find. And whether it's – the, the Making it to that elite level or not, it's, it's all the, the things you learn playing sports and then playing at that level that can really propel your, your career, your life, even after football. But in the NFL, it was, um, there was a lot of really good players, obviously. Um, but honestly, when I would go out there on the field with some of those guys, I played with guys here who, who didn't make it, but they were, man, they were really good athletes, and they could have easily been out there playing, playing, the, playing in the NFL. How often do you touch a football now and your life after Wingate and football and, and, and what's life like for Kim when Cummings now? Um, I'll be honest, not a whole lot of football. Yeah. Um, I, have a, I, have, I have a two-year-old daughter and I have a, a four-year-old son and right now they're in a hotel room. My lovely sister is watching them so, <laughs> so that we could have a dinner in peace. But um, it's, it's go having tea parties. Um, it is and coaching. <laughs> My son's t-ball game, and man, I'm telling you, they will draw hearts in the dirt, and getting them to just run a base is yeah. almost impossible. <laughs> I don't think I'm doing it next year, but um, that's pretty much what, what my life is now. Um, I run our business in Dallas, Texas. I'm still there now, um, business that we started about four years ago, and that's um, take my wife on dates, play with the kids. That's, that's, uh, that's Kenwin now. Kenwin, finally... What does this mean to you? You're a Hall of Famer here at Wingate. You know, it was um, like I was saying with my dad when we came in to when we came to Wingate, um, really didn't know what was to be expected when we when we pulled pulled into into Wingate and walked into the stadium. And you, you get here and you automatically felt loved, you felt needed, you felt wanted um, to be here and. Um, to be in the Hall of Fame. I mean, that was, like my dad said when we looked at it, I mean, it was really, it was like, that's where you should be. And I'm like, yes, sir. You know, that was it, you know? And then, uh, and now here we are, man. So it's a huge honor to be, to be here and to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Kenwin Cummings, the newest member of the Wingate Sports Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, man. Good job. Good job, man. All right, and up next we have another Distinguished Alumnus Award, and that it goes to Chris Cartwright. Can I get Chris to come on up? Thank you. 
So Chris is a 2000 graduate, uh, founded his own medical company, and also a theme here tonight, I feel like, met his wife here at Wingate, and we'll uh, ask her to come up in just a moment. But Chris, have a seat. Welcome, welcome. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thanks. So um, Chris also was um, featured in, uh, in this um, edition of our Wingate Today magazine, if you guys um, have seen this. So um, it talks a lot about your business, how you got started. Um, for folks who have not read it, talk to us a little bit about how, how you got all of this started. Uh, it was uh, it was a little bit by chance. Do you need the article to refresh no, your memory? No, okay. no, no. <laughs> I, 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 I've, I've, li I've lived that one. But uh, yeah, a little bit by chance. My wife and I decided to move back to her hometown in Elkin, North Carolina, which is uh, uh, she had an opportunity to, to start her own business. And she's a practicing optometrist, which you'll, you'll learn about here, I think, shortly. But uh, and um, I come from an entrepreneurial family, had some had some friends that were in a kind of a similar business. And uh, just kind of opened the door and got going. And uh, ultimately, what the business does is have people, you know, we go out and find people that need medical supplies, ship it to their house, and build their medical insurance for it. So uh, it really just worked out pretty well. Found a way to bring a high level of service uh, to the industry, uh, and it kind of caught fire. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. And you also employ some Wingate grads, too, yeah, right? Yeah, sure a do. Company? Yeah. I have quite a few. And so you, you touched on the servant leadership. Um, and I know in the article it talks about when you had that very first order, you went out and, and made that delivery yourself. Yeah. Didn't even have all the supplies. Had to go yeah. to a CVS, get those supplies, and then actually drove the 30 minutes to deliver it to this woman, and she became a... A, a good customer. Yeah, she made great chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that's really what uh, I, I learned. I learned. Uh, I learned a couple things. Uh, worked for my dad. I worked for my dad, who was my first job after leaving Wingate, and learned a lot about the importance of bringing high levels of service and, into 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 business and making it be something that you actually do. You don't just say. Uh, also, uh, my coach Dodd over here. I worked. I interned him for uh, uh, with him in the Helm Center for for two years and learned a lot about selling a vision which was kind of going out and telling people that you can get things done for them before you can actually really do it. Um, <laughs> so when you, when you have to mesh those two together, sometimes that means that you're scurrying around on a Saturday morning to try to you know, deliver on your promises. And uh, tie in the, the service um, that maybe you did at Wingate um, and how that helped you with your business. Um, I think the biggest thing about, uh, you know, the, the when, when I think of service at, at Wingate, it really was just learning about... Uh, the community, we through the lacrosse team, the fraternity, all sorts of that we started. I mean, we didn't really take uh, took it for granted going and picking up trash on the side of the road on a Saturday morning, or uh, standing in a scaffold to raise money for 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 a cause. And uh, the, the the great thing about the way it's affected me in business is what I've learned is uh, you know giving back is of course important. Um, but uh, those opportunities are important to everybody that works with, with, with the company. And, and, and the one thing you get from those experiences is that when everybody goes home, they feel good about themselves. Um, and so those are the things that we've tried to create you know, with, with, with our employees is just good opportunities to give back to the community. And everybody leaves with a positive attitude. And sometimes it's hard to do Monday through Friday. Any advice you would give to some budding entrepreneurs out there? <laughs> a lot of advice? Yeah. I mean, I think that... Uh, um, most important advice I think I could give anybody is if you really want to do it, you got to, you know, push your chips out there on black. Um, um, and it takes a lot of hard work. I would never do it again. Really? <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, it was really hard. I mean, uh, lived in my uh, mother-in-law's basement for two years. Um, you know, we, we spent about six months apart trying to just make ends meet and uh, also went a long time, as the article reads, thinking that I was going to fail, which was really hard. Um, so it was really tough to do, uh, but it was well worth all of it, but I just don't know if I, you know, some, there's a lot to be said for, um, you know, ha just having a job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say that you're most proud of? I mean, you've worked really hard to, to get this business off the ground. What would, what would you say you're most proud of? Uh, really the, the, the people that I've had an opportunity to work with and, and to, and to, uh, um, just interact with as as in in all of my life really dating back to 
here at Wingate. I mean, uh, the relationships that I've made in my life and in my journey and um, uh, the people that I've been able to surround myself with, I'm really just super fortunate. And uh, I think I've made really good choices in, in that department. So I'm very, very, uh, very proud of that. Wonderful. Well, let's take this opportunity to um, give Chris one more round of applause. And we will... Um, <laughs> And we'll also, no, we're going to stay right here. We'll uh, bring up your wife now. Oh, um, yeah. Stephanie. She on, also, um, yeah. She also received the um, Distinguished Alumni Award, uh, 1998 graduate. This um, one on. And has her um, own optometry practice in Elkin, North Carolina. So welcome, welcome. Hi, thank you thank for you. being here. Thanks. So um, your husband talked a little bit about starting his own business. What is it like for you owning your own business, or practice, I should say? Um, I mean, I would agree with him. I mean, it's a lot of hard work. You have to spend a lot of hours. Um, but if you're passionate about it and you love what, you're, what you do, it's uh, oftentimes not a job. Yeah, wonderful. And so um, you knew you wanted to go back to Elkin? After graduation? Um, no? Not not initially. I always loved the area, of course. Uh, and my mentor in optometry was there, so he was actually the one that had initially got me interested in it. Mm -hmm. um, but after having lived in Florida for almost four years, I guess, um, then we just decided it was a good opportunity to move back. So, What was that time like when um, Chris wasn't sure if his business was going to going to take off. Was that hard for you guys? Stressful. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. a little bit, but, yeah. um, but you know, perseverance, mm -hmm. patience, um, uh, made us, made us successful really. So fantastic. Yeah. Um, what are some pros and cons of owning your own practice? Pros and cons. Um, pros is flexibility, mm -hmm. which is nice. Um, you get to set your own rules, uh, which is also nice. Um, and really for me, it was, it's about setting a schedule for, um, patients where I don't feel rushed and I can develop those relationships with them. So, um, that's probably the, the best thing about my job. Um, cons is that you spend a lot of hours, um, and that would be like the top 10, <laughs> just a lot of hours. Yeah. 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 Um, you touched on a little bit those important relationships that you like to make with your patients. Talk a little bit about that and the community that you're trying to grow there. Sure. Um, I mean, I think anytime you're in a role um, where you have the opportunity to not only be a provider for them for their health care, but also um, to be able to build those relationships. Um, I think it's extremely important um, because it shows that you care about your community and you're not just there for the job. I mean, that you really care about the patients themselves, not just uh, not just them being there. So, yeah. Wonderful. What does this award mean to you? Um, it's a huge honor. Um, I, I mean, quite unbelievable. Um, and certainly thankful for the opportunity that I had here at Wingate. Um, you know, multiple um, people have talked about, you know, the people that have surrounded them. Um, and I would have to say from my family to my family here at Wingate to um, my uh, graduate um, doctorate, um, that's been really just an unbelievable um, support. And so to actually be here tonight and accepting this uh, distinguished award is just uh, remarkable. And I'm just thankful for the opportunity. Yeah. How did Wingate prepare you to um, to go into optometry? Did you know that this was a, a practice that you wanted? I to did. Go into? Uh, I knew that um, I was I wanted to go into pre med, so I knew immediately biology major um, for sure. Um, and the teachers that I had here, from Dr. Plant um, to Dr. Haddon, um, there were so many great professors that really. Um, prepared me um, for the difficult um, hours that would be ahead in terms of optometry school. Um, so I was very well prepared. Wonderful. Yeah. And Chris, I didn't get to ask you this, but for you as well, what does it mean to, to get an award like this? Uh, this is this is super cool. Like, I mean, uh, I, was th I was thinking about the first time I ever really came to Laverne Banquet Hall, and I think it was like the, it was the first time that I actually had to buy a tie. And... Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was parking cars out 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 in the front. In a tie. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, we had to wear a tie. There was there was important people in here, oh, very much right. like tonight. Um, but uh, 
this is this is this is really just an honor and 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 to think that uh you know that we've gone forward to do something to make our university proud we're just uh you know very 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 honored to to be here wonderful well thank you both for being here tonight and thank congratulations you. again thank absolutely thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Our next Sports Hall of Famer, Dr. Amber Hines Ginch. Amber put everything she had into something we all dislike, running. She did it really well, though, actually better than anyone ever. She was the first four-time All-Sac honoree and off the course, the first female ever to earn Academic All-America three times. So Amber, you ran in meets from middle school all the way through college, 10 years of meets. How many of those meets did your parents miss? Not a single one. Wow. Easy question. What, what did that mean to you, and, it, and did that have an effect on all of your success? Yeah, so it meant the world to me. They were at every single meet, every single practice. I ran with my dad every single day from middle school. We ran high school, college, so it was just really important to have that support base. So it was really amazing. Your sport's not easy. Uh, you really can't do it alone. You need teammates, coaches to push you through. Uh, what are your best memories of your teammates, your coaches, especially here at Wingate? Oh, so once again, they were all very supportive. So my high school coach, Jack Legrand, is here, and my coach, Dennis Johnson, is here as well as, as, well as some of my teammates, too. So Natalie and David back there as well. So they're, it's, they're really supportive. They got me through a, a lot of hard times and the good times. So uh, their injuries coming back from that and just the mental block of, wow, this is really, <laughs> really bad day. So it's just nice to have all of that support. Obviously, you had a ton of success in the classroom. Uh, along the same lines, you know, those professors were really important to you. The small class size at Wingate, when you and I talked, that was what you wanted, you know, you talked about. Uh, how did Wingate fit your learning style, just your lifestyle so well in the classroom? So it was just really nice going to a very small class size where the professors knew you, they knew your name, you weren't just a, a number or a letter grade. It, they took an interest in what you were doing and I actually got to, to see some of them today too and touch base and catch up again and it was really nice. And it, a lot of those professors, they really helped prepare me for vet school, the rigors of what vet school was gonna be and getting out into the world and actually practicing. and it, a lot, of the, um, a lot of my professors would actually come out to the meets and support us, so they were at every single home meet, too. So it's it, just a wonderful thing to have that. Everyone has that favorite memory or two from a game, an event, a race. Yours took place down in the Sunshine State. What was, yeah. what was special about that day? Uh, so a, my, one of my teammates and I qualified to go to a, a meet in Pensacola, and we got to take another teammate with us and drive down. We drove down with our coach, and it was just a really awesome race. It, my dad was there as well, so, <laughs> and my mom, too. Yeah, Sorry, come on mom. now. Mom was Sorry, there. Sorry, Mom. Mom's over there. Me, too. Me, too. Yeah, so it was just a lot of fun, and a funny memory is my coach always told me I had a raccoon tail hanging off the back of my head that was slowing me down, so he made me cut my hair before that race. <laughs> You were obviously more than a great student and great athlete. You were a great member of the community. Um, reaching back out to this community meant a lot to you. What were you involved in and what were your special memories from that? So it, 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 Wingate really fostered that community spirit of getting out there and, and making a difference. And it, one of the things that I was able to do is work with a local rescue group, Safe Haven Animal Rescue. and it, helping to place animals in homes and there was a local woman that fostered and I was able to work with her and work with some of her special needs pets so it was just really nice to to have that opportunity too
I always have this question for swimmers and runners and cross country. I mean, what's the thought process while you're out? Oh, we're going to go out for an eight, six mile run. I mean, what do you think about all day? <laughs> well, you, I mean, truthfully. Yeah. Well, you go through everything, the, the, all the things that uh, went on in the day, things that you were looking forward to, the dumb things you did. Just keep going over those. <laughs> and, and what you were going to tell your parents that day or just a lot and just schoolwork oh man, this, yep, yeah schoolwork and oh man this is really hard maybe I should just stop no I can do it <laughs> so we just established obviously you're one of the best maybe if not the best cross-country runner ever at Wingate and a doctor but life as a mom a wife that's pretty fun too huh it's very fun I don't know my little one's running around I think she's been zooming through the tables and I'm very sorry she's also been singing to everybody so I apologize <laughs> it, it's that was a challenge <laughs> it, being a mom and, and working and it's I wouldn't trade it for the world I have two very lovely little daughters a little four month old that my mom's holding my two and a half year old that my husband's holding so wouldn't change it for the world Amber Wingate Sports Hall of Fame did you ever think about that when you were running and what does it mean to you Honestly, I, I didn't know. I was like, uh, it, just one day at a time, just getting to that next race and that next step. But it, it's an honor to be here, and I'm, I'm very, very proud. Thank you. Of all the amazing titles you have, and you had at Wingate, how about we add another one? Hall of Famer, Wingate University, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good job, Andrew. Thank Congrats. you. You did great. Thank you. you All right, and up next, the award for Outstanding Young Alumnus, Seth Howe. So Seth is a 2006 graduate, um, and I got a little bit of dirt on him from Bill Nash, so you can thank Bill later. <laughs> um, Bill says he is nothing short of a guy who gets it done, and he does it the right way. So welcome, Seth. So Seth, you are currently a physician, correct? Right. But you um, uh, took, uh, took quite a path to get there. So talk a little bit about your time uh, in the Air Force. Yeah, so first of all, it's great to be back. Um, you know, my wife and I met here freshman year. And every time we come across the, the train tracks, we just kind of look at each other and, and smile because there's just tons of great memories. We don't get to come back as often as we would like, but it's, it's good to be here. Um, you know, thankful for the opportunity to come back. But as far as the, uh, the Air Force route, you know, I remember sitting in the Helms dorm, which doesn't look uh, like it does now, <laughs> um, and I had my pre-med book out, and um, I was reading through it, kind of plotting out the pathway to get to med school, uh, trying to figure out what boxes I needed to check, classes I needed to take. But there was always that kind of little nagging desire to, uh, to go in the military. I was a junior in high school when September 11th happened. I remember watching it you know, on the, on the TV. And, and so that was certainly impactful. And somewhere around that time, I guess late freshman year, early sophomore year is when I decided that um, um, going into the military was kind of where I wanted to go at that time. So I was lucky enough to do Air Force ROTC at UNC Charlotte. So I drove up there a couple times each week. Um, and then upon graduating you know, here at Wingate, started in the Air Force. Um, had a great time in the Air Force. Uh, we went all over. Uh, we you know, lived in Florida, lived in Oklahoma, spent some time in Illinois, kind of traveled all over, the, all over the world. A couple of deployments that uh, certainly Veronica, um, as any military wife or military spouse, understands uh, the difficulties that come along with that. We often joke, um, I think at our six-year anniversary, you know, the Air Force keeps track of how many times you've been deployed. I think technically we were really on like a, a four-year anniversary because <laughs> <laughs> we, had, we had spent about two years apart at that oh, point. Wow. But it was a, it was a great um, experience. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Learned a lot in the Air Force and uh, thankful for the opportunity to have done it. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, small town boy, Pageland, South Carolina. Yeah, that's right. Uh, very small town. Um, you know, Pageland is where I went to high school. Uh, I grew up in Jefferson. No one, no one heard of Wingate because it was pronounced Wingate. Wingate. Yeah. Wingate. yeah. So, yeah. Um, but it was. President Brown says either way is acceptable. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, but and my parents went to school here. Uh, sister graduated from here. Of course, uh, Veronica, my wife, uh, graduated here. So, a lot of Wingate in the family, um, and it, you know, it was it was great kind of coming to school close by for me. Was, and multi-sport athlete, right? And yeah, so I had, you know, I was able to play, uh, you know, football for a couple of years here, baseball um, mm -hmm. as well, and you know, great experiences on the field, um, great coaches, um, had, a, had a great time here. 
Wonderful. Talk a little bit uh, about how how much Wingate influenced you to get to where you are today. Yeah, so I think for me, Wingate was the perfect fit. You know, the the environment was was what I needed to kind of get started. Um, the the one-on-one -on -one that you, you truly get. I think a lot of um, folks up here have mentioned that. But you know, I remember senior year, I had you know a class with with five five people. Wow. So if you ever thought about missing, you were going to be noticed. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> that you were not there. But it was just the opportunity to to have conversations with uh, with professors in, in that type of setting was. I mean, you can't put. Yeah, you can't put, well, I, think, I guess we can't put a price tag on it, but, um, <laughs> but which I was also excited to find out, especially with six kids, that uh, if you, you know, get this award, it comes along with free tuition. Oh, well, we're still right. working out the yeah. specifics yeah. on that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. We'll put, Maybe just one kid. We'll start that rumor. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And so talk a little bit about um, some of the things that you are involved in here at Wingate besides sports. Yeah, so... Um, Sports certainly took up a, a vast majority of the time. And, you know, like I mentioned, kind of ROTC took up quite a bit of, of time as well. Um, I think those three things are kind of the, the bulk of my you know, time commitment here. Did I hear yeah. right that you got your pilot's license oh, as a senior? Yes, that's right. That's, okay. I mean, that's pretty impressive. I did, yeah, the famous ball drop. Um, <laughs> no, we, uh, so I, I got my private pilot's license, uh, I think, in between junior and senior year here. Went down to Charleston uh, Air Force Base and, um, and did that over the summer. Came back here, went to a couple of local airports, um, somehow convinced uh, some family members to go up with me. I think I scared them to death. They Ooh. never went back. <laughs> so, <laughs> but no, it, it was a good it was, yeah. So what's next for you? What's next? So like you, um, currently right now, so I'm at you know, Wake Forest um, in dermatology residency. Um, so I've got a couple years left to go. I think you know, it's hard to know exactly what's next. I'm interested in academic medicine. So you know, that could be staying with Wake Forest or seeing where, seeing where else I go. But, you know, I think um, in the immediate future, getting through residency, raising our six kids, um, and just trying to enjoy each day. Awesome. Well, again, congratulations, and thank you so much for being here. All right. Thanks so much. Thank congratulations. Next up on the athletic side, we have another doctor. This time it's Dr. Anna Atkinson Caparasso. So the South Atlantic Conference gives out two major awards, the President Award for Best Overall and SAC Athlete of the Year. The two major awards at the athletic or at the university level, Academic All-American and Athletic All-American. Only one person ever has won all four in one season, Ann Atkinson. <laughs> Anna, like Kenwin, obviously, a North Carolina native from Marion, uh, talk about your recruiting process as a high school basketball player and then coming to Wingate. Yeah, well, um, when I came to Wingate for my official visit, and it was one of those times you know, I just fell in love with it. You know, the campus is beautiful. Everybody I met was so nice. Um, the team was great. Coach Jackman was great. Um, and I, it was clo closest to home, which I always, uh, that was a plus. Um, and I, I just loved it. Knew, it felt like home. It's where I wanted to be, and, and I knew I wanted to come here. Well, being a great athlete, being a great student, as we talked already with, with Amber, can be really tough at times. Uh, who did you lean on for your support system through that first year? Because they asked a lot of you on that basketball court right away. Yeah, I, always my family has been a major, major support for me. I mean, my mom and dad, um, I, I, they're my best friends, and I hope they feel the same way because I moved three houses down from them. Um, <laughs> and um, but just looking at or thinking back about all the times – they drove me to tournaments and practices and games. I, I struggled getting my four-year-old to the YMCA for soccer on Saturday. Um, so that's just, um, just thinking about all they did for me is um, it, it just, it's awesome. Um, I have two, bro one brother's here. I have um, had two brothers, much older brothers, um, that were tough on me. Um, one time, I, I remember it would snow. They'd have all their friends in the front yard, and there would be an offensive line and defensive line, and 
I'd be the running back, and um, they try, so they they, try, they they made me tough, so it helped out a lot. <laughs> so you had two coaches in your four years here at Wingate, obviously the legendary, the late great Johnny Jackman, and Coach Nelson as well. And then on the other side, as a point guard, you're the leader, leader of the team regardless of year. What was, do you remember about the relationships with the coaches and the players that sticks out? Yeah, um, you know, coming in as a, a freshman, you know, point guard, um, Coach Jackman was great. I mean, he helped the transition. Um, you know, I had Tanitra Barrett as a shooting guard, and, and she moved over to the shooting guard to, to give, let me um, you know, share the court with her. Um, I think any, any of us in this room could be a good point guard when you're throwing the ball to Tanisha Barrett. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it was great. It was um, – Coach Jackman was awesome. And then, like you said, um, Coach Nelson – um, came in after he retired and did a, did a really good job. D different coaching styles, but they knew how to mesh their coaching styles with their players' skill sets, and that, that says a lot about them as coaches. So sophomore year uh, was Jackman's last season down in Georgia. We were there. I was there. Um, we're walking and watching everybody walk off the court. You lose three starters, Tanisha Barrett, who was in the Wingate Hall of Fame now. Um, Nobody gave you a chance. All you did the next year was win two SAC championships and win the region and go to the Elite Eight. Uh, just a little bit of chip on your shoulder that year? Just a little bit, yeah. I mean, you know, we were picked, you know, pretty low in the conference, and, and we were mad. I mean, we were um, – we played with a chip on our shoulder the whole year, and you know, Coach Nelson came in and run and gun offense. I still look at a basketball court and think about the 8 6 four, two sprint she made us run. Um, think if I could do it now, I, I don't think I could, but um, um, we could run with the best of them and, and we played our tails off all year and the Elite Eight was an awesome experience to, to get to experience that with, with my teammates. And what, what, what's your biggest takeaway from that year on the court playing games? I mean, the late run at the end of the year to get the number one seed, to win the regular season, to win the championship, because, you know, you had a couple of losses mid-year and then all of a sudden, like, what, what, what propelled you all to that point? I think, you know, just – Working hard and just never giving up, and you know, working hard. Like I said, we worked our tails off and um, had a, had a great season. Obviously, made Wingate proud during your time here, on and off the court. Um, but now, a doctor. What's life like for Anna now? And how often do you pick up a basketball? And how often are you running back in the backyard? Yeah, um, not very much basketball. I'm a full-blown uh, minivan mom. I've got a four-year-old little girl and a nine-month-old little boy, and um, they're with a babysitter right now. So I don't really know what to do with my arms. You know, I'm not holding a kid. Um, but but you know, I'm married to Michael. He's a football coach, so I'm a coach's wife too. Um, they just won the championship. All right. <laughs> So, but it, it's fun. I wouldn't, wouldn't trade it for the world. As I said, the only man or woman to ever accomplish those four major, major awards in the same year, it all equals to this moment right here, Wingate Hall of Fame. Where does your mind go when I say you're a Hall of Famer? I just, I feel very blessed to have been given the opportunity to, to come here and play basketball for this um, university, and I'm, I'm just very honored. Thank you so much. Anna, again, as we said, and we've already established, you've won every award pretty much ever. So it's only fitting we give you one more Hall of Famer. Congratulations. Thank you so much. So this next award winner, I have only communicated with through email, but I can tell you that everyone needs this type of enthusiasm in their life. <laughs> so let's welcome to the stage Jennifer Foster. She won um, our Alumni Excellence in Service Award. So Jennifer is a 2008 grad, um, and she has been busy since graduation. Uh, yeah. Masters of Art in Teaching, uh, being a missionary in the Amazon, uh, starting her own nonprofit. I being a motivational speaker and I teacher. <laughs> um, so let's have a seat. All right. Um, talking about the jungles of the Amazon. Yes. Jen, why? <laughs> <laughs> I like hot weather. I, I don't know. Hey, that's, that's <laughs> I do. I have been a missionary in the jungle of the Amazon of Brazil for the last 10 years. And the why is because I've wanted to do it since I was eight. 
I remember sitting on a floor listening to two missionaries talk about their experiences with an unreached tribe in Africa, and I just knew that that was what I wanted to do with my life. And it wasn't Africa that I went to. It was actually the jungle of the Amazon. But I remember when I was sitting down with Coach Reich right after I had gotten hired here, Coach said, well, so Foster, what do you want to do? What is your goal in life? And I said, my goal is to go to an unreached people group and reach them for Jesus. <laughs> and he's looking at me like, and why did I hire you as my DFO? <laughs> like, well, <laughs> but he's like, that's interesting. Okay. <laughs> but it truly, since I was eight, has been the desire of my heart. And scripture tells us to have faith like a child. And so I think that's what we all have to go back to is what we really just want to do with our lives. God created us for that purpose. And so out of all of that that I named, um, <laughs> and then uh, also you had a movie that came out about what you were doing in the Amazon, yes. right? So, so how do you do all of this? How do you fit all of this into, <laughs> into a day or into uh, your lifetime so far? Yes. I, the answer is going to kind of surprise you. So how do, I, how do I do it all? How do I make it all happen? And truly the answer is rest. And I, I just remember quite a few years ago, I was at a place of total burnout. I was at a place of exhaustion. I was at a place of just being done. And I just went to scripture and I just started to look and, and see there's got to be more than just striving and going and running and doing all of this. And, and I saw the story of Mary and Martha. And Jesus wasn't condemning Martha, but what he said was, what Mary is doing is best. And she was just sitting at the feet of Jesus. And so that's what I began to do. I just began to spend extreme amounts of time, and I still do, with the Lord every day. I let him give me the downloads. I let him just bring things to me. And if it looks impossible, that's how I know that's what I'm supposed to do. Because that's what I know that he's going to give himself the glory for through me. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And I just, I honor a Sabbath day once a week. I turn things off and I just, I'm just with him. And let me tell you, if you want more success in your life, if you want to stop being so overwhelmed, just slow down. Just stop. I think we found our next MC for <laughs> next, year, next year. You can, you can tell you're, you're definitely used to this. So um, of all of those things um, yeah. that you have done and accomplished, mm -hmm. what would you say is your favorite? Oh, my absolute favorite thing to do. I tell people, I can help you get whatever it is you want. You just have to tell me what that is. If you can tell me what it is that you want, I can help you get it. I love being a life coach. I love motivating people to go after their heart's desires. And I believe my success comes from the testimonies of people who are living out success in their own lives from finding what they've been created to do and doing it. And what does it mean for you to win this award? Ah, oh, to win this award is, it truly means that I took some advice and I ran with it and did it with excellence. I remember years ago I was told, if you want to be a great success, if you truly want to be a success in life, surround yourself by people who are really great at everything you're not. And it worked. Clearly, I did it with excellence <laughs> because all those people deserve this excellence award. I have parents who are here tonight who truly are parents of excellence. I have Coach Reich and Dee, mentors of true excellence. And I just surrounded myself with people in my, my ministry, my life, people who are really great at everything I'm not, and they just make me look good. That's awesome. Yeah. You should give them the award. <laughs> you can share it. Pass it around. I will. They get it for a month. You can, you can take it back. I love that idea. <laughs> so going back to the Amazon, I don't know why I'm so fascinated with, um, with you going out to the Amazon, but what would you say is maybe the craziest thing you've ever experienced out there? <laughs> I remember back in 2016, we were doing a massive church building project. It was the biggest one we had done to that point, and we had a whole tribe that was giving their lives to Jesus. We had brought in people from all over the world to build this big building with the tribe. And I remember about a week before the inauguration service, I said to them, I said, okay, guys, what do you want for our big inauguration meal? What do you want to have? We're going to have something really special. I'll get whatever you want. And they said, we want beef. 
And I said, okay, not a lot of beef out in the jungle. Sure, we, we can do beef. Oh, I think we can. And a guy said to me, I know where we can order beef from. And I said, well, super, tomorrow you go order the beef. Now, keep in mind, we are three days away from the closest city, okay? Three days away. But this guy's going to go order beef. So he goes and he orders the beef. He comes back. I ordered the beef. I said, I'll pick it up on the day of the inauguration service. So the day of the inauguration service, I go to the location with the guy to get the beef, right? 600 pounds of beef I have ordered. And this is what I get. <laughs> By far the most memorable moment in the Amazon was when two men delivered two cows, a 400 pound and a 200 pound live cow to my canoe. I was just glad I had not ordered 600 pounds of chicken. <laughs> yes. Be careful with how you communicate, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> especially in the jungle. But I, I truly have to say that from that, I just learned to just roll with things. Just go with it. We, it ended up working out. We were able to slaughter the cows and, and get all the meat prepared. But, but to just go with it in life, and just have fun. Just laugh about it. Enjoy life. Thank you. Wonderful. Congratulations. Thanks. Nice Our next Sports Hall of Famer, head coach of Wingate Volleyball, Shelton Collier. We could be up here for days talking stats and numbers, but how about this one? Wingate has won 12 regular season titles under Coach Collier. The rest of the 11 SAC schools combined ever have won eight. <laughs> coach, Division I coach for 20 years, you were the Big East Coach of the Year at Pittsburgh, the ACC Coach of the Year at Georgia Tech, and then you came to Wingate. Why? First, I'm a little overwhelmed by following the act before me, but <laughs> bring the room down here a little bit. Uh, yes, I was uh, head coach at Georgia Tech, and uh, my current wife, um, Diane, was a captain in the Charlotte Fire Department, and I had not seen her for 20 years. Uh, we went out on a few dates back at Ohio State when we were in college. And I called her up one day and I said, how you doing, what's up? <laughs> we, went out, we went out and had dinner. Then she visited me, I visited her. And then uh, I decided we were gonna get married, which was a little scary, but we decided we were gonna get married. And if she would have moved to Atlanta, to Georgia Tech, she would have had to start over as a firefighter one and be at the bottom of the totem pole. And if I moved to Charlotte, I could figure out something to do. So. I left my job at Georgia Tech with no job here and just came up and decided to go for it. And uh, at that same month, this opportunity at Wingate came available. And uh, I came down and interviewed for the position and it worked out and it's a pretty amazing story, but it's all worked out really well. Coach, initially, what were your goals for the program? Um, you know, and how did those kind of evolve as years went by? Yeah, I think I, I came up here and I just needed an employment place to work. <laughs> so started working and the team was maybe by standards now very average and um, not really competitive in the conference or certainly not competitive nationally. And, but we grew and we worked together and there's actually some alumni here that were in those first years of the grind where we weren't having much success. And then from there, we recruited some better players and some better players and some out-of-state players. And uh, we raised the level of play. Then we eventually had All-Americans, academic All-Americans, won championships, got to represent Wingate at the Elite Eight at the big show. And uh, it just kind of evolved into something very special. I, I can say I, I didn't see it coming when I took the job. I just thought that I would work here and coach and enjoy coaching. And, then step by step, we became more relevant and more nationally relevant. And uh, Wingate's considered a nationally successful volleyball program now, and it's really rewarding to be a part of it. 
Coach, you've had the opportunity to serve many, many times with the U.S. national team as a volleyball coach. What effect has that had on you? Yeah, it's interesting. I had some opportunities as a young coach. Uh, I was an assistant coach in the 1988 Olympic team in Seoul, Korea. Uh, I've been able to be the head coach of some USA junior national teams that went to world championships. Uh, so I've had opportunities to visit other countries, see other coaches, see what other countries do with their volleyball. And each time I'm around other high-level coaches and high-level volleyball, I feel like maybe I learn a little bit and then I'm able to bring it back to Wingate. So it's been a, a, a joy and a pleasure for me to work with USA Volleyball. Uh, but at the same time, as coaches, we're all learning and growing and try to get better at what we're doing. So um, the opportunity to be around USA Volleyball and, and Olympic Volleyball has certainly helped impact my coaching here at Wingate. And uh, I think we've been a, a good program because of some of those experiences. What's been the most rewarding aspect of your last 17 years here at Wingate? Oh, there's a bunch of them. I, one is I, I truly have players that inspire me every day. You know, some people have jobs they like, some people have jobs they don't like, but I'm around people that are young and ins inspirational. They're really bright, motivated, and it's uh, a, a pleasure for me every day to go in the gym and see motivated players that are that are really, really special kids and uh, much more special maybe than I was at that age for sure. Uh, but then also a rewarding point is um, working with kids that are a little more challenging and maybe need guidance and, and maybe are struggling and, and Wingate Volleyball can be part of their uh, redemption and part of their success. And sometimes those kids that are most challenging to work with sometimes are the most rewarding to work with. And, and we certainly done some special things here. There was a time we won 82 matches in a row, and it was awesome going to every gym in the country and being able to win 82 matches in a row, and then we lost one, and then we won 55 more on top of it. <laughs> so it's, it's really rewarding to be with a group and say we're gonna go do something special and to be able to have something special happen. Coach, homecoming weekend, and you know, it's really one of the best teams on campus does it like you guys. No one does it like you guys at homecoming. All these athletes that showed up tonight, your team is here. Um, the support you've gotten from your alumni, they come back, they care about the team, maybe better than anybody as I said. What does that mean to you to see all them here tonight and how many times they come back to campus? Yeah, I'm not often um, overwhelmed, but you got me. This is good. Um, <laughs> the, the, the players here, we have a big match tomorrow and we're trying to get ready tomorrow, and I've asked them to get their rest, and yet they come here for this. Very cool. And um, I have some alumni from the first years when I was here and from several years ago that came back and surprised me, some flying in from all different parts of the country. And uh, as, as a coach, you don't know what the, the moment is until it's here, and it's here, and I, I really appreciate those people for coming back. I had no idea that I would have this support from my team and, and former alumni, and it really means a lot to me. So. I appreciate that a lot. Coach, just a job turned into a Hall of Famer. What does it mean to you to, to hear those words? You know, as a coach, I, and my team knows this, like we have a match tomorrow. I got to like figure out how to go home and watch video and win a match tomorrow. And <laughs> I, that's what's on my mind. And that's, it's kind of the strength and the weakness of the same. When you're good at something, it's kind of overwhelming. And that's what I do. Like tomorrow I got to go win a match. And tonight I'm in the Hall of Fame. It's pretty cool. I never knew what this would feel like, but... I know tomorrow we got to figure out a way to go beat somebody. <laughs> well, no other coach in Wingate's NCAA history has won more championships than Shelton Collier. Congratulations on the Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. All right, up next we have the recipient of our Champion of Diversity Award, Anthony Days. <laughs> Anthony is a 2002 graduate. He currently works as a financial consultant at Wells Fargo, but counts his community service as an important part of his life. So we will uh, welcome Anthony. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. So uh, first talk to us a little bit about this community service um, part of your life and why you find community service so important. 
Uh, seat's kind of comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Just um, relax. So yeah, um, so yeah, I'm, I currently serve on the uh, board of directors for uh, the Sugar Creek Charter School um, here in, well, I shouldn't say here, but in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, it's one of the, if not the oldest, it's one of the oldest charter schools in, in Charlotte. Um, it serves about 1,700 students, K through 12. Um, and all of these kids come from high poverty environments. Um, all of these kids either receive free or um, reduced lunch. So that kind of gives you an idea of the type of background that they, um, that they come from. Um, I mean, community service, it's, to me, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, I mean, I think back to my days here at Wingate, um, we had an I had an opportunity to participate in a program called Bulldogs Reaching Out. Um, and the men's basketball team, some of us, we would go down to Wingate Elementary School and, and we would volunteer, um, not all of us. We would volunteer basically mentoring little kids there. And it just came easy to me. And I just think back to like just growing up as a, as a kid and I think about the environment that I was in. Um, pretty big family. Um, it was six of us, three boys, three girls. And it, it was kind of like we were doing community service in our house, right? <laughs> like, er, really, I mean, you, have, you come from a family that's, that's that big, you're always kind of helping each other out, right? And you don't really think about it, but it kind of carry, carries over into other aspects of life and even with, with sports. Um, so, yeah, so volunteering with Sugar Creek Charter School was just second nature to me. Um, and prior to that, I had an opportunity to be a mentor with um, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, which is a national organization. And here in Charlotte, it's, it's been around for about 47 years, um, and they've served over maybe 1,000 or so children over that time frame. Um, and it just kind of came to me about 10 years ago that you know, I should be doing more, right? I mean, I just think about the opportunities I've had here at Wingate and um, the opportunities that you know, my family have, has afforded for me, it just, it just made it easy for me to move over into that organization and become a mentor. And we have a lot of first generation students here. So how do you mentor the students that you come in contact with to let them know that you know, there's more out there and to strive for, strive for the best? Yeah, I, I try to be present. Um, so when we have different events and, and things like that related to uh, Sugar Creek Charter School, they don't really get to see um, minorities in, in roles, kind of like what, what I serve um, on, as, a board, as a board member. Uh, I, I kind of think about a, a recent tour um, we had at, at um, Sugar Creek, and I went, we went into one of the classrooms, and one of the, uh, one, one of the young men, he actually kind of shook my hand, and I hadn't even spoke to him or anything like that, but it was like almost a, an acknowledgement of kind of I see you, like, you know, I, I, I see you. And he didn't do that with anyone else that was a part of that tour. And so it's little things like that that kind of make, you know, community service and just helping people worth doing, right? It's, it's, it's innate in the action, right? I mean, I think about this, this honor um, here today, and, and it is an honor, but I'm, I'm kind of, I have mixed feelings about it, right? Because you don't set out to do community service thinking, I'm going to get honored for it, or you're going to get paid for it. No, you don't do that. You do it because genuinely you want to help someone. Um, so when I do get an opportunity to talk to the, any, any other students, I, I try to think about like, where they are as it relates to um, you know, whether they're in elementary, middle school, or high school, and just talk about what they may do after they, they leave Sugar Creek, because we do understand that not everybody's a college student. They may not want to go to college, so we try to prepare our, our students to be successful in life. Um, so, I mean, in a nutshell, that's pretty much kind of how I think through that. Have you had any student come back to you um, after they have left the charter school to say what an impact you've made on their life? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be humble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, there's actually a, one of our students here um, at, from Sugar Creek actually attends Wingate right now, and I had an opportunity to speak with him for the very first time um, at our 20-year celebration earlier this year at the Aviation Museum um, that was in, that's in Charlotte, North Carolina. And he spoke highly of Wingate. He, he mentioned that he was enjoying his experience here um, and that it was a great environment for him. Um, 
and we exchanged numbers and I told him that if he ever needs anything from me, um, just reach out to me. And, and that's the type of relationship that, or relationships like that um, are relationships that I, I want to continue to build as I um, work through um, Sugar Creek Charter School because Again, a lot of these kids, they're just coming from very tough backgrounds. And sometimes we don't stop and think about how, like, some kids, when they leave, when they leave school, or I should say students, because I guess you can say a high school kid is a kid, but <laughs> um, when they go home, they don't know if they're going to have anything to eat for dinner. I mean, some of the kids at our school, they're actually homeless. And you may have smaller pockets of that at some of um, schools that are um, not as challenged, so to speak, but when you have an entire school where most of the kids are kind of coming from that type of background, it's just different. So we try to structure our curriculum to just make them successful and it, it, just regardless of what type of path they choose to, to, to take after, after um, high school. And you talked about having a big family. Would you say that those have been some of the most important people in your life to, to get you where you are today? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think so. Um, I think about my parents and my, my siblings. I mean, we, my dad's here today, my uncle's here, my coach and my cousin. When I was thinking about who to invite to this event, those people came to mind because they did what I'm trying to do and they don't want to get recognized for it. And, um, well, let's give them a round of applause while they're here. <laughs> So, so yeah, so that, to answer your question, I mean, yeah, they, they were a big, my family was a big part of who I am today, along with some, you know, um, some extended friends and things of that nature. Well, wonderful. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you for being here. Thank you. <laughs>
let's do the math. 12, so it's eight. Four of them were from Canada, six from England, and two of us from Russia. So literally from a totally different country, it was just two of us. So it was really challenging, different language. That was really challenging. And it was kind of taking a leap of faith because we never had a recurring trip. We didn't know where we're going. We didn't know the language. Well, we knew barely. But if you were my professor, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> So, and the worst thing is we flew through Atlanta airport and you know what it is there. So somehow Kirk managed to find us. We didn't have a cell phone, so he didn't know we landed, but he did find us in that airport. So, and that was just amazing. <laughs> but it took us a year to learn English to a decent level. And we had a great advisor, Nancy Bush. She was, she was a blessing. So, you talked about Kirk a couple of times, but you know, swimming, uh, an interesting sport with a relationship with the coach and the athlete, much different from other ones. How would you describe your relationship with him? Obviously, he meant a lot to you because you stayed around and helped him coach too. Uh, yes, well, Kirk is actually, I consider him my foster dad. He is the person who gave me away on my wedding day. Aww. So, well, my parents didn't plan to come over because they knew I was planning to elope. <laughs> so, <laughs> but then somehow it went a little bit more extravaganza and we had a little ceremony and I needed somebody to give me away and Kirk was the closest father role model to me in here. So. All right, so let's go back to March of 20, uh, 2008. We're in Missouri. Before we talk about the actual ni national title swim, what was your seed? How did you feel going into that week? Did you have national championship on your mind? Um, the entire year we were planning to win the nationals. We had a goal, we made a plan, and we just were working hard to achieve it. And somehow I managed to be seated first throughout the entire season. Every meet, my time was always first in the ranking. And coming to nationals, I was first, and I just expected to be, to, to get it, to actually get it and put my mark in the history. All right, so 100 breaststroke. Do, did you know that no one had ever won an individual national title at Wingate yet? Uh, no. He didn't know That's that. Chaga, I guess he won the national I meant on the women's side. I'm sorry, on the women's <laughs> yes. side, yeah. On the women's side, yes. That's exactly what I was striving for. I wanted to be the first female national champion at Wingate University. So 100 breaststroke. What do you remember about the swim? Were you in the lead the whole time? And what, what, do, you think, what do you remember when you think back to that? Um, well, the prior year we got 11s on both sides as a team. And I remember Drury University was always the first. They were always winning everything. And coming to final, I remember I was on my lane four and the girl on the right and the left, both of them were from Drury and they're bigger and they're stronger and I just know how they swim. So I know them. And there's another Drury girl there and I was like, oh my God, this is happening. And I just need to stay in the zone. And the rest is the history. What was that moment like when you got out of the pool? Who do you remember running to? Who do you see? <laughs> well, actually, um, that was the second year here. So my vision got a little bit worse. And I remember touching the wall <laughs> And my name, since it was a lane four even, was in the green dim light, not the orange bright. So I touched the wall and I looked and I actually cannot even see what happened. <laughs> so I hop up of the pool and there comes the person, he's like, well, congratulations, you won the nationals and now you're selected for the drug test. And I was like, oh, great, I won, awesome. <laughs> Maria, what does this mean? Finally, what does this mean to you? Um, it's, it felt amazing. It felt like I actually worked two years not for nothing. It's, it was a time well spent and a time well listened to Kirk because he just inspired and drew me through the entire season and motivated me through all the, throughout everything. Maria gave back to her school, in the pool, in the classroom, in the community. Then she gave back even more as a coach. Now it's fitting the school gives back to you. Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Maria. Thank you. But he might as well have with as many people as he is associated with that did graduate from Wingate. Um, winning our honorary alumnus award, George Bauer Jr.
Welcome, welcome. George and I um, sat down and had coffee the other day, and uh, he told me about all of the connections that he has for, uh, to Wingate. So, George, why don't you share with everybody else all those connections? Uh, my mother graduated in 1939, and she... She and her sisters attended Wingate, and my wife and her siblings all attended Wingate as well, did many of my friends. Uh, and as a native of Wingate, um, uh, I guess I'm one of the few that people say, how did you get to Wingate? Well, I was born here. <laughs> uh, and I didn't go far because I'm in Wadesboro now. So uh, <clears throat> back when my mom went to school, uh, Tuition was a little cheaper. I've got a check from my grandfather's uh, account for $7.50 for tuition. And <clears throat> no one get any ideas. It's not going to go that yeah. well. Again. <laughs> and, and, and the <clears throat> story that she told me, uh, the two cows that we saw up here back in the 30s <laughs> would have been a good tuition payment because there was a lot of bartering for education back then. So. Again, no one get any ideas. We're not taking chickens <laughs> or cats. So also talk about your connection uh, with Wingate, the first job you had not too far from here. Right. <clears throat> Many of you are familiar with Wingate Outfitters, and some of you that are Wingate natives or have been here a long time remember Austin Store. Uh, well, Austin Store uh, was where Wingate Outfitters is, and I, that was my first job. We sold uh, groceries, hardware, clothing, farming supplies. The, if this was a sidewalk, there was a gas pump right there, you would just drive your car up there, and you'd gas up right there on the street. So uh, it, was, uh, it was a great place, and uh, a few of you remember the store, I know. How has it been watching the campus change over the years? <clears throat> it's been amazing from a sm small school when I was a child and, and to see the growth, uh, not only in the buildings, but in the student population and the outreach. I think uh, uh, Wingate's always been community involved, but it's really amazing now, the growth. And you are currently involved <laughs> with the Braswell Trust. I am. Um, Talk a little bit about that and, um, and maybe one of your most favorite um, ways that it has impacted someone. Right. Well, uh, the Braswell Trust uh, is a trust that was uh, founded and established by James and Bronnie Braswell, who were Wingate residents, lived a few blocks from here. They were folks who uh, I would say would, you would consider under the radar your next door neighbor. Uh, they had no children, they, um, he was a savvy businessman, and they um, had plans for their assets after their death, and they, they established the trust. And it supports many things, uh, just to tell you a few, uh, the community shelter, the um, Habitat for Humanity, and uh, many others. Well. If you think about the community shelter, that's really where the rubber meets the road. That's people who, who are in dire need there. There, there was a young lady named Kara a few years ago who uh, had five children, uh, found herself as a single mom trying to support children and daycare and have a job, and she, her, she was evicted. She went to the shelter uh, where she got emergency uh, shelter and assistance. And from there, they, through their program, helped her get employment at a dollar store. She was skilled and was able to become a manager. And from there, <clears throat> she was able to uh, have enough funds to support her children to get daycare. And from, from there, sh she received uh, a stipend called uh, a rapid rehousing. It's something the Brazil Trust funded that allows people in her situation to uh, get their first month's rent paid, a deposit, and a good start because people who have nothing can't pay a deposit. They can't begin their life over. 
Today she is, works for the U.S. Post Office. Her daughter received a scholarship to college, and, and because of that, she, she's, uh, she's up and going. Wonderful. Uh, so um, Mr. Bauer was telling me that the Braswells were very humble people. Um, and meeting Mr. Bauer, I would, I would say the same about him. It was hard to get him to, to brag on himself. But if you could, um, just uh, tell us what this award means to you. Oh, I'm, I'm very appreciative and uh, honored and humbled when I see the, the award winners and, and the honorees tonight. These are amazing stories, and I'm very appreciative. Wonderful. Well, we so appreciate you being here. Let's give him one more round of applause. <laughs> here uh, tonight and we hope you have enjoyed the evening. Um, we would like to note that um, photos are being taken outside uh, with the awards and your family um, as well if you want to uh, head out there afterwards. Once again, congratulations to all the award winners and we hope you guys enjoy the weekend. Looking forward to all the great things going on, all the time people put in for tonight. want to thank everybody for their hard work for this event and uh, enjoy the evening and the weekend. Congratulations. <laughs>